Hello and welcome to Your Damn Jets. Um, this is another video that I didn't think I would do for a while, but since everybody is talking about mental health in the context of the Olympics, I figure that I would talk about mental health uh, now while uh, they're talking about it, since it is topical. Um, I think in the United States, uh, mental health is really devalued and they're not pr providing the resources that people need to get good mental health. I've been relatively lucky, but uh, I know a lot of people have problems getting help. And I've, I've even had problems getting help. I was able, in the end, to get some help, but it's not been easy. Um, my history with mental health uh, begins really... Uh, in Canada when I had my heart attack at 24 uh, after the heart attack but before they were able to go do the catheterization and tell me was what I had problems with um, with mental health I had panic attacks basically I was 24 and I, you know I had a heart attack and I thought well you know this thing can come back at any time and this time could be this day could be the la my last day on earth um, I was not in a good mental state at that time. So they gave me uh, Xanax and um, I think the hospital prescribed Xanax. It was a long time ago. The hospital prescribed Xanax, as I recall. And uh, I was not, I don't recall being seen by a psychologist at that specifically at that time. Um, and I was careful and eventually I stopped taking the Xanax because the panic attacks passed. Um... I did see a psychologist later, um, but it was for other personal reasons, and uh, she was helpful. Um, uh, but then, you know, that relationship was established and it was dissolved because I didn't need her anymore. And then I moved to the United States and I was fine most of my life until I got the lymphoma. And then... The panic attacks came back because I had symptoms and I didn't know what they were linked to and they misdiagnosed me with MS and I had another doctor who said this is not MS and it was a, he was an MS specialist and said this is not MS, I think this could be vascular. Well, if it's vascular and I had an attack in June that looked like a stroke, what prevents me from having just another stroke now? Um, you know, I didn't have any signs that that thing was coming. I, it just came out of the blue. Uh, so I was not well, well mentally and they put me again on Xanax, um, which I tolerate fine. Um, sometimes if you go on the internet, you're going to find places where they scare you with the stories of addiction. I, I don't have that problem. I, I don't know if, I don't know how addiction works. I don't know if there are personality types that are, more sensitive to being addicted. I'm not. I took Xanax twice in my life and uh, I've been able to just stop it. Uh, but my second uh, experience with Xanax was supplemented eventually by Buspirone, which is a long-term anti-anxiety medicine. Uh, so... Eventually, I stopped the Xanax and I took Buspirone, and eventually, now I, I'm I'm completely drug free for my mental health. I'm not taking any drugs. Um, and when I had the lymphoma and during the time of diagnosis and everything, and it was a span of months that that was going on, I I eventually was able to find a psychologist and then a psychiatrist to take care of my case. And the psychologist would be talk therapy, and the, with the psychiatrist, it would be mostly re reviewing that you know the drugs were not killing me, and get a new drug prescription and stuff like that. Uh, so I was able to find a psych psychologist and a psychiatrist. But it took a lot of work on my part because the pandemic had already started and people were starting to feel the pressure, I guess, and they were starting to f seek help. And there were quite a few places that I called early on 
that were either telling me we're not taking new patients, period, or they were they had conditions like you have to be on Medicare and I'm not on Medicare at all. Um, so they, they, they had conditions that prevented them from helping me. And eventually I found a place locally. It's not associated with Johns Hopkins or UMMC. It's local. Uh, that w- would take me. And I mean, and they did fairly good work i have problems with the off the, the office sometimes the office would make stupid decisions about prescription renewal and stuff like that um otherwise from a medical standpoint i think they, they were fine but this was not my first option and i tried while i had the lymphoma and i was treated and i'm still treated at johns hopkins for the lymphoma they're still following me and i have mris periodically um, so it's not it's not over by any means. But I tried to get help from Johns Hopkins. And the answer I got from Johns Hopkins is that we only see uh, patients that are in Baltimore County. I'm not in Baltimore County. I'm not in Baltimore. I'm not in, and I'm not even in the county. I'm not in the city. I'm not in the county. We're outside. We're, we're semi-rural. We're one hour away from Baltimore. We're not anywhere close. And they would not see me because I'm not in, in, in the county. I think that's stupid. I think that's a stupid decision. I, I don't know how that decision came about. You would have to make an argument for it to convince me that this is not a stupid decision. You would have to make the argument. Nobody made the argument to, to me. They just said, we don't treat people outside Baltimore County. Even though... I was a patient at Johns Hopkins undergoing chemo at that time. And sometimes the chemo can mess up your head pretty badly. I was lucky that it didn't, but some people have problems with the chemo or or just with the cancer diagnosis itself. Um, but they wouldn't help me because I'm not in the county, even though I'm a, a patient of the hospital. UMMC, I also tried with them, but it was different. It was not that I, that I was not in the county. It was that I was, I was not a Medicare patient. Like the first few places I tried over here, they told me, oh, you're not a Medicare patient. We're not going to see you. So, and I also think that's a stupid decision on their part. I don't know how it came about. Nobody gave me an argument for, for that, but that's what they do. And I think it is stupid. And I think it is hard. I've ha- I've heard a lot of stories from other people with cancer or other diseases talk about mental health and getting help. And it is very hard in this country to get help. I was lucky to find the help that I could find. But there were a lot of people that turned me around. And over the years, I've also had problems with sleep, for instance. And I know that my father has had problems with sleep. I talked to him recently, and he, he told me, oh, yeah, I have insomnia, and, and, and it's been all my life. But apparently, in this case, he, he wakes up, and then he, can, he picks up a book, and the book puts him back to sleep, and he can go back to sleep. Whereas in my case, I get up, I start reading, and I'm going to read the rest of the night. I'm going to sleep two hours, and I'm going to read the rest of the night. That's it. Um, so I think my case is worse than his. But... Um, Anyway, I've had problems with sleep also. And, you know, the primary care physicians, they give you pills and they do this and they do that. And then then nobody sends you to a a psychiatrist or a psychologist to get properly evaluated or maybe get some therapy, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy. Now, now I do have, I have gotten contact and to touch with a sleep specialist at Johns Hopkins who's also, who's also a neurologist, uh, which was important to me because I have a primary CNS lymphoma, so I don't want to have somebody who just do psychology. I want to have somebody who knows uh, you know, intimately how the brain works. Um, and one thing I learned from her, you know, because she's a neurologist, and I'd never heard of that anywhere else before, she talked to me about central apnea which is different from obstructive obstructive apnea is when your tongue falls back or something like that and then it blocks the airway central apnea is like when your brain just forgets to breathe (laughs) and i never heard of that before i talked to this neurologist who's also a sleep specialist 
Um, your brain can forget to breathe at night. Um, I thought that was pretty remarkable. Uh, and then it wakes you up. I guess your brain has to be awake for you to take the next breath or something like that. I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but, uh, you know, already my choice of having a neurologist who's also a sleep specialist pays off. And then as part of the, I'm going to have a sleep study and we're going to go through the steps of you know, trying to establish a diagnosis for me. But as part of that, I also I have access to a psychologist who's going to do uh, cognitive behavioral therapy with me which is something I've never done before. Even when I had the help of the psychologist for the lymphoma, he didn't do uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. But this doctor will do that with me. And I've started a little bit towards that, that doing a few exercises that were given to me by the neurologist that I saw. She said, we're going to start you off with this. And then when you see the the, the psychologist, you're gonna, you, you'll already have a, a head start. Um so yeah, I'm going to get kind of behavioral therapy and now I'm, I'm kind of wondering whether I found a back door to uh, psychiatric services at Johns Hopkins because as part of my sleep management, they're going to give me psychological support, which I did not get before. I didn't get any psychological support from them. They would give me pills to help with my insomnia, but eventually all the pills stopped working and now I'm on CBD. I take CBD for sleep and it works relatively well. I've had periods where it didn't work, but I think it's a combination of things that, that all need to, to go together to make it work. Um, but it worked for a long, 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 long time. Better than all the other medicines they've, they've ever prescribed for, for that. Um, and so I think, you know, in general, it's it's hard in the United States to get good mental health. Uh, and I, as I mentioned to, to the youngsters on Discord, um, you know, I had chemo and the chemo has burned away a good deal of my uh, uh, shame and self-consciousness. So now, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I... I I needed mental help, and I'm still probably going to need mental help and cognitive behavioral therapy to be able to sleep right at night. Um, I have no shame saying that. that you know, I, I needed the help, and it's like any other illness. You, if you need help, you need to go get help. Um, and in this country, there's a stigma associated with that. And, um, you know, but I'm, right now I'm shameless. Uh, it's like, you know. I need help. I'm just going to get the help I need. And I'm going to tell people, I'm going to tell people, I'm going to be an evangelist for those who need to hear it, that if you have a mental disease, get mental help. Um, and so I said, there's a stigma associated with it. There's society in general, I think, don't doesn't look very well upon people that have, uh, that need mental help. Uh, companies don't look kindly on that also the insurance companies we are lucky that our insurance companies support some some more stuff than the general insurance but there are insurances out there that will say oh you need mental help well you know you have to pay yourself out of pocket we're not going to pay for it and and we're we're lucky at the same time i would say that our insurance puts limitations on how much mental help you can get um which are not equivalent to what you find for physical health. Um, so there's still a stigma with, with our insurance company against it. And, and, and the whole population has a stigma against it and the companies and everything. If you, if you say, I need to take time off because I have a, you know, I'm suffering from depression or anything like that, then the company is going to call you a, a non-player. Um, and so, Right now, the, the the Olympics are going on, and the the, the news. Uh, I watch the news mostly because my wife likes to watch the news. I, I don't seek it, but um, I know that the news on TV they do um, put the focus on the mental health of, of of the people in the Olympics, and I'm I'm a bit ambivalent about the whole thing. I, on the one hand, I think that putting the conversation on mental health and talking about mental health is important because anybody can have mental problems and it can be temporary or it can be lifelong. My mother 
was depressed her her whole life. I I don't know when she was a child, you really, because I wasn't there. But um, as far as I know, it's been li- lifelong, and maybe developed in young adulthood. I, I I'm not clear about that, but. Uh, she died. She died. She's dead now, and she had depression all over all over her life. So for some people, it's lifelong. For some people, it's temporary. Like myself, it's temporary. I if I don't know what's going on with my health, uh, I'm going to have uh, big problems. If I'm if I feel that I'm dying and I don't know why, I don't know. You know, th- there may be something I could do to prevent it, and I don't know what it is I need to do to prevent it. I'm not going to do well. Uh, but for me, it's temporary. For some people, it's permanent. Um, so they're putting the, the news in there right now. is talking a lot about it. Uh, but, I, I, you know, so on the one hand, it's good because people are talking about it. On the other hand, I'm wondering what concrete measures are going to be taken by our government and our society to address the problems that we have. Um If the solution is going to be to carve out something special for the athletes, we've we have missed the boat. Because, you know, I understand the athletes are like us, and for some people that's a revelation. It's like they have mental health problems? Oh my god. Yes, they're like us. Um they also poop. Everybody poops. News flash. They're like us. Uh, they have mental health problems. They have difficulties. Um, but on the on the one hand, yeah, I understand they have difficulties, and sometimes they have to hi- they, and they have to hide it because the, the, in, in the society we have the stigma against mental health. So if you're an athlete and you co- start complaining about mental health and how you need help, uh, there can be you know negative consequences for you it's like oh you oh we don't want you on the team anymore because you know you have mental health issues that uh impact you and you know we cannot have you anymore um but i'm i at the same time they have all this infrastructure around them which could be maybe needs needs modification right now it could be modified to provide mental health so on the one hand, they do need men- mental help. On the other hand, they're not the people that I'm most worried about in our society. What I'm most worried about is not... I mean, I'm worried about people like myself. But I'm even more worried with for the people who do not have access to the resources to get mental health. And then you get things like people who, who flip out and, and decide to go kill other people. Um, that's that's a real problem, and you need to put resources to detect those people and give them the help. And the, the detection is not like I'm going to detect that you're going to kill somebody, so I'm going to put you into prison to prevent you from killing somebody. What you need to have is something much earlier than that, and detect that that, that this people is going into a bad direction because it, it's not automatic. People flip at the last minute, but there's a lot of stuff that happens before then. And that's the stuff you need to deal with to prevent them from getting to the point where they feel like their only solution is to flip. Um, and so I'm concerned. You know, Are we going to put into place something to get the Olympic athletes to, to be happy with their mental health? Or are we going to put into place something to help everybody, everyone in the society? Because... You know, the guy who works at Amazon or the guy on the docks that has to work so many hours a week and cannot say, well, I'm going to take time off now uh, because I need to go see the doctor or I need to just a break from this work. You know, if those guys don't get the resources they need, it's going to impact their mental health. They might flip. Or, or just have a, you know, a, a suboptimal family life. You know, I'm thinking about my, my mother, my own mother, who I think her, her problem was not so much that 
there was there were no resources around you know we're we're from canada i'm from canada originally which is different than here and i think there's better resources for for mental health there not great but better generally um so i don't think the resources were resources were not there but her case was very complex uh where even the the, the her illness made her not want to get m- a solution uh, and it's very vexing when you have an illness that makes the person decide to reject everything um, I don't think she wanted to get better so I, I, I look at my mother and the, the quality of life we had as children and you know she, she didn't beat us or do stuff like that but there were times where my father had to take us away from her because she was in, in, in a down period and uh, and it wasn't stable with her. Uh, you know, she loved us and, and stuff like that, but we were not in a great environment with her by any means. And and I'm thinking also about the cats. We, we uh, saved the last cat that she owned. We saved him from her is, is Zeno. It's our cat now. Uh, and if you hear Zeno, Zeno is a cat, and we saved him from her because I'm convinced she, I, we were going to go there for Christmas, and she called us and she said in in a, in a hurry, you know, can you take the cat with you to the United States from Canada to from Montreal to the United States? And, I, and let me tell you, that's not a small task. Uh, it w- it went better than we thought, but then I had to scramble to figure out how to get a cat from Montreal to the U.S. Um, pass customs and do stuff like that and not have the cat just poop in the car. Uh, and I'm convinced if I, I had not taken this cat in with us that he probably would be dead now. She would have found a reason to euthanize him because she couldn't handle the cat anymore. She, she got the cat when she was feeling fine and then she went into a spiral downwards and the cat was too much. Uh, and and as a child, we had multiple cats at the house. And, you know, in, in retrospective, I'm wondering whether some of the cats were disposed of that way. And even cats that, we, she, you know, we I remember in particular one cat who kept getting mites and or I don't remember if it were they were mice. I called them mites. I'm sorry. I'm not going to find the right medical term. But that cat, it was mysterious. It, that cat kept getting mites. And I'm wondering whether it was something that she made up. Because we had other cats before and we had other cats after in the same house and they didn't get mites. So why, why did this cat have that problem and not respond to medicine? And the my story came back later also that she had bed bugs. We wanted to go visit her and she had bed bugs. She didn't have bed bugs. She invented the bed bugs. So retrospectively, I'm wondering, you know, about the cats that we, we had and we loved, my brother and I. My mother may have been too far down the depression hole to really care for those cats. Uh, and unfortunately, some of them may have been killed just because she didn't, she, she was, she was not totally there. Um, and I look back at my childhood. And so people with mental health problems who have children, typically it will impact the quality of life of the children. And then I'm worrying about the Amazon worker, as I said, and the duck worker who cannot get mental health help and how they're dealing with it in their day-to-day life, more than I am worrying about the Olympic uh, person. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, the Olympic... Uh, uh, I don't remember the bloody name I'm supposed to use. Uh, the people that are participating in the Olympics, the, the, the sports people... I'm losing my English. Um, I, I like them, you know, I want them to get the best care possible. But they're not at the forefront of my mind when I think about healthcare in the United States. The people at the forefront of my mind are those who cannot, who do not have the money, they do not have the resources, 
their life is going to be impacted negatively. If you're at Amazon and you say, I I need to get mental health and I need to take time off, how is it going to impact you? Are they going to dock your pay, not give you that promotion? Um, There's a good chance that that's what's going to happen. And if you're a worker in a warehouse at Amazon, you don't have a nest egg to to fall back on. So yeah, um, I think in the United States, health healthcare is not is not prioritized at all. It's 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 the second fiddle to physical health, uh, and it can impact all kinds of of aspects of your physical health even. Like my lack of sleep right now, I was given a pretty long list of things that it could do to me. Like it, it could lower my seizure threshold, for instance. Just not getting sleep could lower my seizure threshold. So I could, right now, luckily I don't have seizures. I'm still on, on my Kepra medicine that takes care of the seizures. But if I don't get enough sleep, it can lower the seizure threshold and then you can start having seizure. You can, may need more medicine to be able to control the seizures. More medicine that you have to pay for. Uh, I'm not sure that as a society we're making um, the right trade-off uh, by by devaluing uh, he- uh, mental health in favor of physical health. Uh, I don't think that's that's necessarily the right trade-off because if people need to take more drugs because their seizure threshold is lower, then they're then we are putting more money towards drugs. Uh, instead of towards well-being and if we improve well-being then a lot of other things are going to fall into place you know i'm not i'm not the kind of person uh, who will say you know let me back off a little bit sometimes you have studies that come out and say well if you sleep more you're going to have better health and up to a point i believe that but do you have other studies that come out that, uh, that say, well, you should say you should be grateful three times a day because it's better for health. And the more out there those theories are, the less I believe in them because I know scientists often have confused causation and they think that A causes B, but in reality, B causes A. So they will say things like, well, if you're grateful three times a day, you're going to have better health. But it could be the causation could be reversed. If you have better health, you're more likely to be grateful three times a day. And then they do their study and they confuse the, the, the causation link. And it's not at all how they talk and how they thought. And, and it's been a lot of times, I'm sorry, I've been in the medical world for a long time since I had my heart attack at 24. And I've read a lot of stuff and things have evolved and it happened many a times that the scientists said, well, if you do this, then that is going to happen. And sometimes it was not quite that direct. So it, they saw a correlation between A and B and, and not the causation necessarily. But then either the scientists themselves or the press said, you do A, then you're going to get B. And it turned out to be completely reverse. If, because people had B, then they were able to do A. Um so I'm not the kind of person who has like magical thinking that if, you know, mental health is a solution to everything, but I think we need to improve the well-being of everybody. And the people most at risk are those who do not have the resources right now to get the help that they need. And then we end up with tragedies, with people taking up arms against other people or taking up cars against other people or they're not going to take up anything that they can against other people because they feel that they have no there's no other solution um so so yeah i've gone on for about half an hour now and i think that's enough yakking about mental health uh but it's very important to me uh, to get mental health and if you need mental health i heard you to try again and again and again and again until you get satisfaction unfortunately 
they're not going to hand it to you on a platter saying, Here, here's your support. Here's the support you need, sir. That is going to help you. I had to search a fair amount of time before I was able to find my psychiatrist and my psychologist. And the psychologist that is going to work with me at John Ho- Johns Hopkins, I-, I was not at the time looking for a psychologist. I was looking for sleep help, period. And I contacted them, and now there's going to be a psychologist who's going to work with me. So I may have found the back door <laughs> to get psychological health at uh, Johns Hopkins. Um, but anyway, I've gone on long enough. Uh, you know the drill. I'm all for mental health. Uh, I might have another video later about more different aspects, but I'm going to stop it here and say goodbye and uh, see you next episode. <laughs>